The one stat that reflects how talented the team I played on 1979 at USC was 37 of those players played at least one year in the NFL. It's mm -hmm. a lot of talent. All right, here we go. So, so Paul, in um, 78, you had a really, really tight game with the Irish. Mm -hmm. But then back in 79, I think going into the game, you guys were like number four, Irish were number nine. It was a relatively easy win. Do you, what do you remember about that game? We tied Stanford the week before, right? Uh, which was super annoying uh, because we had the lead 21-0 at half, uh, and we, we we gave up the game. We, we tied 21-21, and they didn't have overtime back then, right. sudden death, whatever, in college football, so it was a tie. That's it. And I knew because we were really good, because we won the title um, from UPI, the coaches poll, the year before in 78, so I knew we had a chance to do it again, because mm -hmm. we had all these guys. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I was super bummed out. I remember having a shouting match after watching the film with Paul Hackett. Okay. And I'm yelling at Hackett. He and I are the only people in the auditorium. And I've never yelled at my coach before, but I was yelling at him like, like what are you doing? I mean, because we sat on the ball, we had 21 nothing, we played prevent defense on defense. We sat on the ball, we ran, we ran, had a bunch of three and outs. They got hot, it was Turk Schoner, who had a really great game for Stanford. Mm -hmm. And so I was just really mad. Um, and so the next week we go play Notre Dame. Mm -hmm. And we have the ball on the one yard line they pinned the ball deep with the punt and early in the game. We had the ball deep on the one we, we came out. We had like a, a third and six. And 99.9999% of the time, a run would come in. And we played traditional conservative football. Because you were inside the 10. Inside the 10 yard line. Right. We'd punt it out, get the defense yeah. on the field, and play yeah. percentage play, yeah. right? Just try to move it out well, a little bit. Yeah, give you... In comes a pass play. Mm. Nice. Yeah. And I'm like, Okay, got it. It was called, I remember the play. It was called 65 Irish. It was a special play for, for Notre Dame. And I get the play and I, go, I walk to the huddle. I'm like, whoa. Paul Hackett was actually listening to me. Yeah. <laughs> then my next thought was, so. better complete this. Yeah, better not mess yeah, this yeah, up. Don't screw this up. Don't screw this up. Don't throw pick six no inside the hand. Over, right, no, yeah. yeah. So we did complete. We moved the sticks, and we we moved it on down. We ended up scoring a touchdown, a 99-yard touchdown, and we just and we were just on. And that created like the momentum yeah. of the game, and we were just feeling. You know, you've had games like that, Steve, where yeah. you just you're just feeling it offensively, and um, and we, we were running the ball, we were throwing the ball, and by the way, Notre Dame played well. I mean, Notre Dame had 535 yards total offense. So it was, like a, it was like a basketball game. Basketball, back and forth, fast break game. It was a very entertaining game, but we were, we were just on. And I, was, I threw for over 300, and by the way, I probably had two games over 300 yards well, in my career. Well, that was hard to throw. But, yeah, better. right. It's not hard anymore. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah, every time you throw on every play. Right. And Charles White had rent for uh, 260 or something like that. I mean, it was a fun, fun game, but uh, for the fans, back and forth, entertaining. But yeah. I think we just were feeling it that day, especially right. on offense, right. um, and it's a, it's a great feeling. Yeah. And your team was loaded. I mean, you you know, you had three guys in the backfield who were, one was you, an All-American, two were Heisman Trophy winners. You had Ronnie Lott on defense, Brad Buddy on the offensive line. I mean, talk about how what it was like playing on a team with that many mm -hmm. talented players. You know, the interesting thing about having all those talented guys, we had so many that we really had no stars. Mm -hmm. There was nobody that could Everybody step, was everyone was a star. Yeah. Right. So nobody could step forward and say, hey, this is all about me, or hey, you know. It, it, no, there were no stars on that team. Uh, high character guys. Right. Um, and Wasn't Marcus there as well? Marcus, Blocky Marcus, Charles, Marcus right? was yeah. a sophomore. He started as fullback yeah, yeah. as a sophomore. Yeah. yeah, he later won the Heisman, of course, uh, in 1981. But, um, that was the coolest thing about that team. And, and you look at, uh, you wouldn't think that because you look at all those stars, you think a bunch of uh, ego guys, no ego, because we had so many. Yeah. 
Right. And, and kept, kept each other, other in check. check. Yeah. Yeah. Kept yeah. each other in check, yeah. yeah. And, yeah. and running a lot on defense, I mean, God, you know, if someone gets out of line, he's right in their grill. And we had guys like that on offense as well. And I, Roy Foster told me the story years later, and he was an All-American. He was starting uh, my senior year as a sophomore at offensive guard. He played for the Dolphins, the Niners, and really good player, a Pro Bowl guy. Uh, he told he told me, you probably have some stories like this, Steve, but he, uh, I saw him, and he, I hadn't seen him since USC, and uh, gave each other a hug, and he said, Paul McDonald, you intimidated the hell out of me. <laughs> I, I was like, 300-pound dude. I was like, over 300. <laughs> yeah. I, go, I go, Roy, I mean, you're 300 how pounds. I mean, how could I, how could I do that? He says, man, you're awfully serious in that huddle, man. Yeah. I did not want to make a mistake, yeah. right? Yeah. So it's those little things like that that you don't really, uh, no one really talks about, but it is. Yeah. I mean, you're out there having fun, you're doing your thing, but it, it's a seriousness of the fact that there's so much at stake and every play matters and every game matters and you stack one on top of each other, that can lead you to the promised land of a, of a yeah. title or something. Yeah. And that, it's interesting how you, how you kind of tied that all together because, you know, when, you, when I think back on, on my career and when I, when I got my first chance to play at Notre Dame, it was the, the, the seniors, the older guys, that went into Jerry Faust after uh, my first experience playing the second half at Miami. And, you know, I was just doing my thing and being myself. But the senior offensive lineman went into Jerry Faust and said, we want this kid to start. There's something about him. There's something that we like about him. He's, Interesting. His energy, his, you know, right. whatever it is. Now, I, you know, I was like, ah, I'm just being me. You know, I don't know what it is. But the one thing and the biggest compliment that I think we can get as quarterbacks is when your former teammates come up and give statements like that, that they – you, you you were in, whether intimidating doesn't always mean something negative. It means right. we had a standard, we had expectations. I think the biggest compliment that a quarterback can receive is from his teammates that that come back years later and say, "You were a great leader," or "You, I loved playing with you because, you know, you always were focused and ready to go, and we knew that, you know, we had to we had to perform, we had to we had to bring our A game if we wanted to get in that huddle with you, and." Whether it was good, whether it was bad, you were consistent, you were a leader. To me, that's the biggest compliment yeah, you can get as a quarterback. No question. Yeah. So we talked about how loaded with talent your team was. Uh, it's interesting because I looked before I knew you, you knew you were coming to join us. There, in the history of the NFL draft, Notre Dame has had more players go in mm -hmm. than any other program in the country, and USC's number two, mm -hmm. and both over 500, and I don't think anybody else has even close Amazing, to that many. Yeah. Wow. So was that part of your decision-making factor when you wanted to go to Notre Dame because you knew there was just a place that had great, talented players? For sure, for sure, and, and I can tell you, opposite of what you experienced at USC, I mean, you guys, you're two years starting. Two years, yeah. Um, you guys were in the national championship conversation all the time you know when I got to Notre Dame it was Jerry Faust's third year and we were ranked high but we you know my freshman year my sophomore year we we were good but we never lived up to our expectations and we couldn't figure it out you know we were like well we I had Mark Bavaro I had Alan Pinkett we had we had a lot of guys that went on and had really nice NFL careers Tim Brown came in a year behind me um, we had a lot of players, but we, we never could figure it out. And we felt that it was on us. We felt that it was a lack of performance on our part, that we needed to turn it up. And, you know, we found out a little bit later that it was a factor of, of our overall leadership, our head coach, right. and the culture that, that he couldn't create, that immediately was was evident as soon as Lou Holtz came in my senior year, we realized that at that point, we didn't know until right. we were kids. Because you hadn't experienced right. it. We were 18, 19, That's 20 year old kids. We just so talk about leader, that, because yeah. I was going to ask, it's a great segue. What was that championship culture like under Lou Holtz? Because that's, when I think of Lou Holtz, I think of championship culture. Well, like I said, um, it took all of maybe three minutes wow. in his first meeting for us to realize this is different. And, and I mean, and he, he made the hair stand up on the back of our necks when he came in and looked at us and, and started laying down the expectations and, and this is what we're gonna do and this, this will not happen anymore. We will find a way to get Notre Dame back where Notre Dame belongs. And 
it just it just permeated through the whole room. I mean, we we sat there, we're looking at this guy in awe, and we had just met him. Right. And uh, it just to all of us, I remember I had the conversations that we all had after that meeting, just kind of walking back to our dorms and just saying, you know, it was like it was like we had a religious experience. I mean, <laughs> literally, we were all like, oh my gosh, you know, what was that? I mean, that was amazing. And you know, we found out as the process continued the way that he started kind of um, creating the environment and the culture and the, 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 the championship kind of expectations and what it takes to be a champion, right. uh, we started all buying into it. It was on our senior class. Right. We were the seniors going into that year, right. and we don't have a lot to show for it, but he credits our senior class of being the ones that kind of laid the foundation, which Second we took school. a lot of pride in because right. we had to buy into it for the rest of the guys to buy into right. it. And we bought in, we gave everything we had for Lou Holtz, and, and it was the most rewarding year of my life, even though we didn't even go to a bowl game that year. It was, uh, but to be a part of transforming or turning a program around was huge. You, you buy in when you believe it. Right. Mm -hmm. So yeah, exactly. they believed that Lou Holtz, you guys believe that Lou Holtz knew how to get this done and what he was talking about. You believe what he was we saying. We wanted it. You, of course you did, yeah. You wanted but, it before though too. we didn't believe, that's right. We didn't, we didn't yeah. believe in ourselves or we didn't trust for, it wasn't a conscious thing. No. Like, but, yeah. but we did 100, we believed 100%. Yeah. If we did what this guy asked us to do, good things would happen. There is a certain charisma thing, isn't there? Just like, you just can feel it. Like I, when Lincoln Riley had his press conference when they introduced him mm -hmm. as the coach at SC, like almost like a calmness came over me as a Trojan fan. Like, <laughs> this guy's the real deal. Right. I could, I could yeah. just sense it. Like I just watching it on TV, I'm like, this is not bullshit. Mm -hmm. right. This is real. And you, I don't, I can't explain it. I can't tell you yeah. why. I can't. T he didn't say anything that other coaches well, don't say. It's a feeling. It's coach speak, right? You know. But right. there was something that comes from the way he said it and the way he just the. And yeah, I can't. I can't explain it. And it was on TV. I wasn't even in the room. And it was kind of a. Cheesy little press conference. Yeah. I, mean, <laughs> I don't want to. I mean, they had the band there and everything. Yeah, yeah. And, and don't you like our band? <laughs> no. We can go. But, yeah, we can do a whole podcast just about the we band. We do that, yeah. <laughs> but the point being, I remember watching that press conference. But as you, I mean, he was back there. I, I was watching him, and I've seen you on YouTube. You can go back and watch it. And he's sitting there like, you know, what is all this yeah, stuff? Yeah, because all this stuff but, that was happening. But as soon as he got yeah. the chance to speak, that's what you're talking about. Right. That's when you're saying, oh, wow, this is a little different. Right. There's a confidence. There's, a, there's an aura about him, and, and he knew exactly how to communicate that and how to translate that and how to get people to buy in. You also played for a, a coach that had championship culture. What was it like? You, know, you mentioned in a previous podcast mm -hmm. coming in and having that expectation of beat right. Notre Dame, beat UCLA, win the Pac-8 or 10 or 12 depending on what year it is, um, um, win a national championship. Right. Is, was that something that, you know, if somebody else said it, you might not believe it. Did you believe it when you heard J-Rob say, these are our goals? I totally believed it. Yeah. I, mean, I totally believed it. And I think I believed it because he knew it. He knew how to do it, how to get it done. Um, and yeah, totally hook, line, and sinker. It was like, okay, this is, this is what we're, we're going to do. And you can probably... You know, team, great teams you played on, uh, Steve, comment on this, but I remember we had a game in 1978 um, against Notre Dame um, that was a, a great game, back and forth. Uh, we ended up winning in the end. Um, and I remember talking to some players on the, on the side, that were on the sideline that didn't play. They may have played special teams, and they may never have played. And I just asked some of them, did you guys think we were going to win this game? And they're like, 100%. Mm -hmm. 100% we knew we were going to win this game. And it ta that's what it takes. Yeah, it's that belief. It's right? that belief, and it comes yeah. from the leader, right. and it flows down through everybody on the team. So if you've got some, the players on the field that believe they're going to win, but everyone on the sideline, they don't think so, Right. that's an energetic thing sure, that, that sure. can be felt. That can hold you down. That can yeah. hold you down. Yeah. That can hold you down. But if it permeates through everybody, right. Mm -hmm. um, you got a really good chance of getting where you want to go. No doubt. I mean, the the, the mind uh, and the mindset is a is a very powerful thing. I mean, um, even talking about the next level at the NFL level, um, you know, I can give you all kinds of examples of 
teams that most people look at and say, this is a mismatch. And I would look at it and say, yeah, but that, that team is starting to believe in themselves. Right. And they got a lot of really good players. Right. Once they start believing in themselves, they're going to be good. Because the, the difference in the competition level and the ability, ability level, when you got two, whether it's two great college football teams or two talented college football teams or two very talented NFL teams, the, the, the talent level is pretty even. Right. But the team that believes and that expects to win right. is going to find a way to win most of the time. On an individual level, do you also notice that with certain players who, you, who are, let's say, all pro players versus guys who are you know, barely struggling to stay in the league? Is, uh, is the mindset play a big part of that in your estimation? I think so, for sure. I, I mean, you, you, when a guy has a proven track record of being um, successful at, at, at the highest level, there, there's an air of confidence about that person that is obvious to everybody else. But you can also see it, and you, you'll, you can give a lot of examples, Paul, I'm sure, but you can also see it in the younger guys the ones that have that little extra, just like there's something about that guy right. that, you know, whether it's a confidence or in some cases maybe an arrogance, mm -hmm. um, but not in a negative way, not an overconfident way, right. um, but just a belief that I'm different than everybody. I, yeah. I can do this yeah. and all I need is my chance. You know, wait, just give me the ball, let me, let me, let me show you what I can do. Yeah, the mind, the mind is powerful. I mean, it's almost a naivete to that whole thing where somebody has that and they go into the next chapter in the NFL. Right. Uh, and like, why can't this work? Why can't we beat these guys? Why can't, right. you know, let, let's do it. Let's, right. Are you kidding? We've done it. So, but if you've had enough times where it hasn't worked, yeah. then you start to believe, well, maybe this, you know, the reality check is, well, these guys are pretty good. You start talking to yourself, you start putting this in there, and other guys just seeps into the other guys' minds, and pretty soon everyone on the team thinks, yeah, I don't think we can win this. Well, how many, how many, and you, I'm sure there's a long list on this one as well, but how many super talented guys do you remember playing with over the years that never really made it? Yeah, many. Because this, this up here is so powerful. I mean, you just, you just didn't have the ability to to either trust yourself or to um, react appropriately in the moment to make the key decisions and the, to have the, the poise and the presence to think clearly while things are happening. You know, you see him in practice, you're like, that guy's amazing. Why can't he translate it to the game? Well, he just can't. Right. You know, it's not because he doesn't have the ability. He just, you got to have both. Yeah. You got to have, you got to have it here. Yeah. You got to have it here. And obviously, you've got to have the talent to be able to get it done as well. But if you don't have those other two things, it's not going to happen. A lot of great athletes walk around the streets that, that never reach their potential. Hey, Paul. Yeah. This is the part where we're supposed to tell people to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. OK, will you please do that then? I mean, yeah. if you enjoy it. Yeah. Please do. And if you don't, do it anyways, because we need your help. Yeah, we do. <laughs> also, we have a website called GameChangeNation.com. Just go there and subscribe and you'll get tons of free content. And what we're really trying to do is create a community of people that love sports. Yep. And the great lessons that we learn from sports, but we want to hear from you. We do. So we're going to have a bunch of social media pages from TikTok to Instagram to Twitter to Facebook. Instagram, I probably already said all of them. Please join them and tell us your stories. We'd love to hear from you. Oh, and we wrote a book. Oh. Forgot about that. Forgot that. The book is called Through the Tunnel. It's available on Amazon now. If you go straight down here to this link that you can see below us, you will be able to purchase it. We'd love it if you could do it. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys.